Serious, what secret could ruin your life? So. Don't really know how to start this off. But. I'm attracted to beds. It started somewhere during my early high school years. When I was really starting to discover myself. There was something about beds. The fact that when you go to sleep at night. You're always with them. Their purpose is to make you feel comfortable at night. When you're at your most vulnerable. Anyway. I modified my twin bed towards the end of high school. Essentially tearing the fabric. Shoving some pillows in the side. And make a little hole that I could insert myself into. I've always known that the behavior is odd. But I can't help myself. Nowadays. I live with my girlfriend. I don't have that twin bed anymore. But anytime we have sex. It has to be on a bed. If it's not. I can't get hard. Needless to say. If this got out. It'd truly fuck me over. Edit 1. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Is this for all types of beds? What about hammocks? It's basically mostly mattresses in a room. I've basically figured out it's based around two things. Comfort and safety. A hammock outside? Sure. That might be comfortable. But would I feel safe sleeping out there at night? No. If I threw some pillows on the ground in my living room. I'd feel safe. But not entirely comfortable. Why throw pillows on the ground when there's a perfectly good bed in the next room over? Does your girlfriend or the bed feel better? Actually. My girlfriend feels better. There's something about the warmth and comfort my manhood feels inside of her. A perfect amount of tightness that pillows can't provide. Mentally though. Part of my mind feels ashamed that my dick prefers my girlfriend. What did your parents think when they found the hole? I'm pretty sure they haven't. I basically tore some of the fabric from the box spring and attached some velcro to it to cover the hole. I then put that side of the mattress against the wall. My room essentially is the same as it was when I moved out for college. Bed is still there. In the same spot. With the covered hole against the wall. I took out any stuffing before I headed off to college so if someone stayed in my room. They wouldn't really notice a difference in comfort. Edit 2. When you're having sex with your girlfriend and you're in the missionary position chest to chest and ear to ear. Do you stare at the bed or close your eyes? I imagine that I have a vastly different reason than others do for having a mirror above my bed. So do you watch porn that only takes place on a mattress or is it just pictures of mattresses? I only watch porn in bed. Usually the porn I watch has a mattress but it's not necessary. It is better though. Like double dipping. Are you sexually attracted to your girlfriends or is it an any port in the storm type of deal and you found somebody you enjoy being with that just happened to be a woman? This is a good question that I don't know if I'll ever have the answer to. It's probably too late to reveal this. But fuck it. When I was 7 years old. I visited my family in Iran for the first time. It was great. I got to see my grandparents and cousins both for the first time and experienced Iranian culture and food. During the visit, my cousin and my grandfather took me out to a restaurant. But we got in the way of a protest. At first it was peaceful. Until the police showed up in riot gear. My grandfather and cousin tried to hurry as fast as they could and take me out of there. But tensions escalated when several of the protesters began throwing rocks at the police. The police began throwing out tear gas grenades and opened fire on several protesters. But even non-protesters were being caught in the crossfire. I saw several people die that day. There was blood seeping into some of the street cracks and making trails. People were being hysterical and all I could hear were the endless gunshots followed by screams of anguish. I'll never forget the family that was holding their son who was bleeding out. He was my age and after looking at him I just went numb and felt hopeless. I couldn't comprehend what was happening around me until several years later. Luckily. Me and my family were near the edge of the protesters when it all began. So we were able to get out and into safety. When we returned. The rest of my family embraced us and tried to console me. The day after. My parents booked the next flight that would take us back to the states. My sister did everything she could to cheer me up. But nothing worked. I just didn't know how to feel. I couldn't think. 
and I went numb again reliving everything in my head. When I got back stateside. Life was never the same as it was. All of my social and academic skills were non-existent for several months. I would go days in school without talking to anybody and frequently had to go to the nurse's office because I would get flashbacks of that experience. I couldn't sleep and just stared at my ceiling in the dark of my room at night. I couldn't even cry. I was just in shock. After a couple months of this, my parents were able to get help from a psychologist. The psychologist said that I had PTSD and that my survivor's guilt was a major symptom of it. Instead of taking an SSRI at the age of 7, the psychologist referred my family to a therapist who could help me. Three times a week for five years I went to my therapist and we talked about everything under the sun. Including my traumatic experience. I started to play video games a lot too. My sister introduced me to the Gamma Cube and we played a lot of SSBM together. I felt that video games were an escape from the world and yet at the same time contained messages that were applicable to real life. Eventually I got into the Wii. Which led to my Xbox and Halo and all the other games I play nowadays. I probably would still be lost without video games today as I would have had no way to cope with all the trauma. When I started 8th grade. I decided that I would move on finally. My trauma gave me a lot of insight into life and the world around me. And current events made more sense to me than my other classmates. It was hard finding friends who could really understand me. But I was lucky to find the ones that I have even to this day. All throughout my time at high school I've tried to come out my shell as a person and last year I really was starting to succeed. I enrolled in the full IB diploma. Joint leadership. NHS. E. T. C. And I developed a dark sense of humor, naturally. Many people view me as nonchalant due to my relatively carefree attitude. But once you live through an experience like that at 7 years old and moved on nothing stresses you out of functioning. I am graduating in little over a month from high school and attending an honors college. I plan on becoming a streamer on Twitch. A competitive player in multiple games. And a computer science major in the hopes that I can get a job at a gaming studio and make improved games. Once I get enough experience. I want to start my own game studio and have a triple A title under my belt. Although I saw some nasty shit when I was a kid. I probably wouldn't even be 1% of the person I am now without it. I'm 23 years old and I suck my thumb every night to go to sleep. I do it when I'm nervous. When I'm bored. When I'm sad. Most importantly when I'm by myself. I started when I was 2 or 3 years old because according to my mom I just missed my pacifier too much. But I remember sucking my thumb made me feel so safe when my dad was violent. I grew up with him till the age of 9 and I just never really stopped with the thumb. I've never told any close friend. Nor the many therapists I've had. I guess mostly just embarrassment. Not wanting to explain why. And not wanting to face if it's unhealthy. I don't think I'll ever stop. My mom jokes that one day I'll have kids and I'll be sucking my thumb right alongside with them. Well shit it's probably true. I wonder how many others. I was molested throughout my young life by a family friend's son until I was a young teen. No one knows other than my therapist and girlfriend. I really came here to let anyone and everyone here know that if you ever want to vent, talk, or seek advice I'd be very happy to help. I'm going into grad school to pursue a degree in the mental health field so I feel like it's part of my calling. No matter your situation feel free to PM me. No need to be shy. I've helped a lot of friends through tough times and they almost always say that they put off asking for help because they felt like a burden on me. This is not a burden at all. I'll offer no judgment. And I'll just listen if that's what you need. Just know someone out there genuinely loves you even though I don't know you personally. Take care. Okay. I probably have like 30 of these because I was an addict since 12 and I've always had issues. This is one of the ones from when I was younger I was bullied by this kid in my neighborhood for years. We were friends growing up. But after I switched to his school things changed because I was the new kid and immediately alienated by everyone there because the ringleader decided it. 
This kid was not the ringleader. Just one of his main friends. The ringleader and his friends made my life hell for years and put me through physical and emotional abuse that I don't think I'll ever recover from. They made sure in a time I would make a friend to start extorting them until they couldn't take it anymore and they would abandon me as well. It wasn't until 7th grade I finally got two kids who stuck by me no matter what. I was walking with my friend. Through my neighborhood. We had just come from this forested area we would go to hang out. I always had a Swiss army knife on me. To bit branches or do other stupid stuff. Well. We passed by this kid's house and he was outside with another one of his doucher bag friends. They were kicking around a soccer ball. He goes and tries to kick it as hard as he can at my head but it misses and lands right next to me. I pick it up and pull out my knife and threaten to pop the ball. He gets mad and starts coming towards me. We are all arguing and he gets in my face and I just got furious and fed up so I push him as hard as I can. He just starts screaming. I mean like screeching. I didn't even realize what had happened at first but then I remembered I did not close the knife. It went right into his side. The knife had this little broken edge where the keychain was supposed to be. So I closed the knife immediately and managed to convince them that that was what cut him. I have no fucking idea how my parents did not get a call after that. I opened up the knife later. And it had blood about 3 inches down the blade. He never said a word to me after that. Though. I am pretty sure he knew what really happened. This is probably my tamest one. When I was younger I was skiing with my brother and my dad. An avalanche went across the pist and stopped about halfway through. My brother was buried by it and since I saw it happen. I knew exactly where he was but because he had annoyed me earlier that day. I pretended not to know whereabouts he was buried and basically now I don't have a brother. Looks like this will get buried but here goes. I'm 18 and I like to go cruising in the local park toilets, which has a glory hole BTW. One afternoon I felt horny so decided to go to the park toilets and see if I can get any action. I was waiting for 5 minutes in the cubicle when a guy came into the cubicle next to me. I didn't see who he was but could tell through the glory hole he was wearing a suit. Next thing you know his penis is through the glory hole and I'm having a blast going to town. After the guy came in my mouth and left. I decided to leave and hopefully get a sneak peek of who the guy was. When I left the toilets I could see a man in a suit sorting his belt out making his way to the park exit. It was my dad. I went back in the toilets and puked all over the sink. I have never gone back to that park again. As a teenager. I came home drunk and threw my guts up in the toilet. I vomit intensely. So intensely that the day after. I usually look like I got a sunburn from the burst blood vessels in my face. So this time. The vomit heaving process was also causing me to have to crap. I'm normally a pretty clean and respectful individual with relatively high personal care standards but I didn't have a lot of options in this situation. I pulled my pants down and shit on the floor while continuing to throw up in the toilet. That's the last thing I remember until waking up in the morning to my mom's frantic shouts coming from the bathroom next to my room. My mom has always been a fairly dramatic individual with a scream first. Solve later sort of disposition, omg who shit on the floor? You kids are really pushing it. What is wrong with you? Did you purposely do this so I would find it? Dot. She told me to come here and look. Sleepy eyed and out of it. I peered in the bathroom to see one perfectly formed turd lined up. Pointing at the toilet. I was biting the inside of my mouth to keep from falling apart laughing. I rasped out. Oh geez that's disgusting. I don't know who did that. Mom. I suggested maybe it was one of my really young siblings sleepwalking at night or something. This is the first time I've ever spoken about this in all the years since. Please don't tell my mom. I hate my mother. This isn't some angsty teen. Mad that he didn't get to hang out with his friends. I've been married 14 years. And have kids of my own. I've always loved my mother. Until she got cancer. You can see the details in the post I made from this account some time back. But suffice it to say she's beyond selfish and fucked up. To the point that she's willing. 
and actively trying to ruin my life simply so that I'll move back and be her caretaker. Despite all of the other options available to her. And knowing that I can't. An example. Currently she's putting it on me that if I don't move back she's going into hospice. Which means stopping her chemo. Her cancer hasn't come back. There's no reason for her to think she's dying. It's purely a way to emotionally manipulate me into doing what she wants. Literally do it. Or I'll kill myself. Double quote. And I've gotten to the point where I couldn't care less. I almost want her to just hurry up and die. So that she'll stop making me an emotional wreck every fucking day. And it is every. Day. I wake up to 500 word essays about what a horrible person I am. Or how shitty her life is and how if only I were there I could fix it. Etc. Daily. And I just can't take it anymore. I wish I could do more to help her. I really do. But. More than that. I wish she would understand that I can't. And stop making me feel like shit for it. That she would finally stop trying to strong on me into moving there. And just do one of the other options that would improve her life. As soon as I was 18. I emancipated myself from my family. Cut contact with everyone I knew. Changed my name. And moved states. I now live as a man. I've put myself through community college. Have an amazing job that I love. Gotten top surgery. And have access to hormone therapy. I'm 28 now and have been living with my girlfriend for 3 years. And she knows nothing of my past. I haven't even told her I'm trans. With avoided sex and nakedness for a good while now. And I doubt she has questioned it. I can't let anyone know that I'm transgender. I have a good job and life and I can't risk it now. Most of all. I'm finally happy this way. God. It feels good to say all that. I'm a non-offending pedophile. I am attracted to girls as young as 9 years old. I've never looked at child porn. I've never touched a child. And I think it's monstrous and despicable for anyone to do those types of things to a child. I'm not exclusively attracted to young girls. I find women my own age and older attractive as well. I hate myself every day. I've thought about killing myself many times. But I could never think of a way to justify it in a letter to my family without telling them the truth. I cannot seek help. Because professionals are required by law to turn me over to the police. I cannot confide in friends or family because that would immediately end our relationship. And word would get out. I can't imagine how someone would find this out. But if they did I would probably kill myself within the hour. I couldn't bear seeing my family look at me. And I could not live as a registered pedophile. I avoid any situations that put me around young girls. I'm not sure I want children of my own someday. Not because I'm afraid I might do something. But because I would feel even worse than I do now if I were to be attracted to my own daughter. It would destroy me completely. I've noticed my attraction to young girls since about first or second grade. Which at the time wasn't an issue. It became an issue once I got to be about 13-14 and still noticed that I found 9-10 year olds attractive. I knew for sure what I was by the time I graduated high school. I'm going to have to live my entire life with this secret. Hating myself every day to the day I die. I can guarantee you I hate me more than you can. I've tried killing myself before. A very serious attempt that left me in a coma. Just after I recovered. My family member succeeded in suicide. I tell everyone I would never. Ever try again because of what I saw them go through when family member died. Truth is. I've got a plan. And I'm playing the long game. This plan is to make it the perfect accident. Double quote. First step was getting a promotion which allowed me to move thousands of miles away. Made no friends here so there won't be anyone nervous when they can't reach me. Won't go into more details. But I'm just waiting for a certain weather event. Which likely won't happen until late summer early autumn. But then. I'm gone. And free of the suicide stigma for my family. I used to work for a kingpin as an infantry specialist. 
I managed all the drug flow in several counties of a southern state. I don't mean I held onto a QP of weed. I kept about 20k dollars cash in a safe along with other products and few guns and ammo. You name. I had it. In any quantity. One day. My boss didn't show up for drop off. And then again the next day. The third day comes and his brother is at the door informing me that my guy had been arrested and had been watched for a long time. Fortunately for me I kept my identity to everyone a secret. And unbeknownst to me as well my guy had a secret plan to keep me clean if he ever went down. That afternoon. He took the safe. All the products. Firearms. And cash. Then told me to skip town fast. So I did. And moved to my hometown where I never got back that deep into the game. I never heard from him again either. I was 22 then. A few months later. I hear on the news the place I was living then had been raided by police and the SWAT team looking for me essentially. But without any intel on who I was. My name. Let alone my race and gender their search became a bust. That was 4 years ago. I'm a cardiologist in the U. K. I have a private practice and I find the private hospital I work at charge extortionate rates for tests like cardiac ultrasound. ECG. Monitors etc. So I decided to use my NHS hospitals facilities at weekends when they are not in use at much lower rates than the private hospitals charge. I'm upfront with patients about the charges at each facility and they always go for the cheaper option. The problem is the NHS hospital don't know I do this. I am not sure what they could do if they found out. I'm not stealing anything and the equipment is always spotless. I've even recruited a nurse colleague to help me who I pay cash in hand. I've done this for 8 months now. Patients have saved money and I've made a fair whack. I reckon I could get suspended or even fired but I'm not sure. I'll carry on anyway. It's better for my patients. That I am a sex offender. When I was 19. I attended a house party with a friend of mine at the time who was the one that knew everyone. After we got there. Someone went and bought alcohol. While people at the house started to smoke and take some pills. I didn't do either. Smoking fucks with my lungs too much. And I dk what the pulls were. Fast forward a couple of hours and everyone is now a level of drunk. Some tipsy. Some good. Some plastered. I was pretty damn drunk but not plastered. One of the girls. Who was plastered. Started to make out and get naked with a female friend of hers. A lot of people dipped out downstairs at this and some of us stayed to watch. Included my friend and I. We both get the look from the girls making out and the come here finger from them. Same time the second friend we brought with us starts to fall over saying I'm going to vomit. I get them to the bathroom a sap and stick around to make sure everything was alright and it all makes it in the toilet. About 10 minutes pass and my buddy come to the bathroom saying they want me upstairs and that he is done and will stay with the vomiting friend. I head upstairs to see both the girls naked. One laying on the bed and the other switching between making out and sucking on her tits. While standing over the side of the bed. So I kneel down and start to play with her pussy and finger her. After a few minutes I notice she stopped moaning and she isn't moving anymore. I stop what I'm doing and stop the other girl. Who was too drunk to notice and for cues to see on her tits. I make sure she is still breathing. Which she was. And ask the other girl to help me dress her. As we are dressing her. We got lucky and heard the guttural sounds of involuntary vomiting going to happen. We got a trash can in time and just laid her on her side with head out over the can and finished dressing her. Like 15 minutes later cops came up the stairs and called for EMTs immediately. Unknown to us. Someone left and their grandparent picked them up. Who called the cops? We all get asked questioned. Tested our back. And a don't fucking drive home drunk talk. Said we would all get cited for underage consumption. All this happened and my friend successful hid in the basement. About 6 months later. I was headed home from my GF's house and was pulled over for lane change without signal. I was pissed. The cops in her area are dicks as they were from a small community in the city. He runs my info but the returns with gun drawn in hat but not aimed. Got really nervous real quick. Q being arrested. I'm stunned at this happening. 
First time. I don't even ask what for until I'm in the back of the cruiser OMW to the station. Unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. And sexual battery of a minor. I didn't know what to think. I was out on bond for almost a year before finishing the case. I was changed with battery because my friend had left bite bruises on her neck and shoulders. Was offered guilty to unlawful conduct and dropped battery with max time probation recommend. 18 months. Otherwise I was looking at 2-74 battery. I took the deal. However. When the judge sentenced me she did not take the recommendation from them and gave me 15 months prison. I was floored. I immediately started to cry as did my family and the audience. Do I wish I could take back that night? 100%. But I can't. And I have had to learn to deal with it. I knew a girl for all of 4 hours. And it changed my life because of what I did. It is hard getting into good jobs. I have a hard time making close friends. I am branded for life. And in most cases viewed worse as a murderer. Anyone who doesn't know me and somehow only hears that I am a sex offender looks at me like I'm a disgusting child rapist that should be suffering. I just made a mistake. I'm a sugar baby. I'm 21 years old and date men that pay me. I've been seeing two men over the last 8 months or so. One is 38. The other is 42. I don't necessarily have to do this as I have a decent job for my age but it makes paying tuition much easier and I've become addicted to the easy money. I've always had a distorted view of sex and maybe my lack of a father figure led me to this. It doesn't bother me if people I don't know call me a prostitute. Whore. Or whatever but I would hate for my mother to find out because I know how disappointed she would be. I genuinely enjoy the two men's company that I have been with and I've saved up quite a bit of money because of them. For me. Doing this has made more positive impacts than negative ones but I know that my mother would never approve. Nor understand. Throw away. I moved to Austin a few years ago as a musician and nobody would book my band for shows because I hadn't played any local shows yet. Catch 22. Couldn't get experience on the resume because I didn't have experience on the resume. So I started a new system. I would contact venue A saying. I would love to play at your venue. I also have local shows booked at local venues B and C and have played at local venue D a few times before as well. Double quote. Then once venue A got back to me under the assumption that I had a local following. I would email venue B claiming I have shows booked at local venues A. C and D. So on I went and I got my foot in the door here by lying to every booking agent through my teeth. When I was 23 a friend and I went out to a bar with his much older uncle. There was this girl that was flirting with the uncle that was probably 28-29. Not really my type. Not really anyone's type. At 2am when the bar closes we, stupidly. Drive back to my friend's house and this lady comes with us flirting with the uncle the whole way. We continue drinking and then out comes some marijuana. And then some cocaine which is rocked up. 4am rolls around and my friend's uncle is trying to convince her to come to his room with him. But she's saying she just wants to go home and starts crying. I tell her that I could try driving to her home. So despite the uncle's plea for her to stay with him she hops in the truck. And we drive off. For 3 blocks. I pull over and tell her that I'm far too messed up to drive. But that I would walk her home. She lives 7 miles from where we're currently standing. But there are railroad tracks we can follow that can save us some time by following them for 5 of the 7 miles diagonally across town. As we walk I come to the conclusion that I should really be rewarded for making this journey with her. And start flirting a little. She instantly starts talking with a higher pitched little girl voice and asks to hold daddy's hand. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. But I follow along. About 2 miles in she tells me that she wants daddy in her mouth. Had I not been intoxicated on a few different levels there's no way I would have obliged. But I was. So I did. We end up having weird sex on the railroad tracks. Afterwards she puts some clothes on and says something like. Baby has to go pee pee. And walks towards some bushes. 
The sun has started rising at this point and I can clearly see her squatting and going pee pee with her pants around her ankles. I finally realize I've made a huge mistake. And it'll take hours to walk her to her place and then walk back to my truck. I'm not sure why I chose to do this. But I looked at her and yelled yoink. And started running as fast as I could. The cries for daddy getting quieter and quieter in the distance until there was just the sounds of birds chirping as I caught my breath next to my truck. I drove home. Feeling bad for what I had just done. But after a warm shower I crawled into bed with my fiancé and everything felt just right. This will probably get buried because it's not nearly as flashy as other posts. But here goes. I dated maybe a dozen girls in high school. That's my secret. When I first met my wife. I told her I had had only one girlfriend in high school. This is true in that I only had one serious relationship. Outside of that relationship I had taken several girls on dates. Nothing serious. Though. Recently. While visiting my parents. My sister brought up a girl I had dated who wasn't my previous girlfriend. My wife lost her mind. She started asking me if she needed to get blood tests for STDs. She became convinced that I was cheating on her, I've never cheated. And she tried to forbid me from watching pornography. This was all in front of my parents and siblings. 2. Completely embarrassing. As it turns out. My wife is severely mentally ill. We're not sure exactly what's up with her. But it's some kind of anxiety disorder. And apparently me having previously dated women that were not her is a trigger for panic attacks and mania. So. I just don't tell her about my teenage dating life. But. I'm very afraid that she'll find out and do something drastic. E. G. Suicide. Even if I talked to her about it and just took the issue head on. She'd probably lose it. Mental illness sucks. There's so many comments. No one will read this. But. What the hell. I turned 50 in just under 2 months. I'm trans. I first realized something was off since I was 11. For many years I was ashamed. I felt that it was a weirdo sex fetish and that I was broken for feeling the way I did. I couldn't masturbate without fantasizing that I was female. I still can't. One hell of a sex fetish. That's the secret I've been ashamed of and unable to tell anyone in my family or close friends about it. Things came to a head a few years ago. My work had taken me away from home for an extended period of time. The unfamiliar surroundings. Working with new people helped me finally put the pieces together and for the first time I realized that my sex fetish was really something more. There are people I used to work with who know. But no one close. I'm so afraid. And so ashamed. My family is from the deep south. They won't understand. There have been other people who were trans in my family. And I watched how that went down. No. Thank you. I have extremely poor health. Yet I can't convince social security that I'm disabled. Though at least I've convinced my home state. And have food stamps and medicaid. But that's it. I've sold everything I've owned except this beat up old laptop. I steal Wi-Fi from my neighbor. I'm pretty sure he knows. But besides some YouTube I don't take up much of his bandwidth. And he never says anything. If my family knew I was trans. I would lose what little I have left. I'd be homeless. I wouldn't survive a month. There are so many times when I go to bed hoping I won't wake up. Or that I could just be normal. I'm sorry if you read all this way. My little brother is a pedophile and he allegedly molested my two younger sisters and my mom won't do anything about it. None of them have outright told me that it happened but I heard it from my older brother. Who heard it from my sister's friend. And now that he and I know. It's blaringly obvious what's going on in that house. He and I went to the cops but our information is based on hearsay and none of them would speak up during the investigation. So nothing happened. I can't handle being in that house. My older brother and I quit going there for the holidays and now it's just something that I carry every day in the back of my head. I'm afraid I'll lose my career if this comes out despite doing my due diligence. 
I'm a teacher and I love my job but I don't see how anyone would want somebody who was powerless to stop this in their own family from happening looking out for their own kids. When I was 12 years old. In 7th grade. I played on the school football team. I didn't really have any great friends. But I had people I hung out around. Anyway. One day at practice. I had to go to the bathroom. So I told the coach and went into the bathroom. I was standing at the urinal when the stall to my right opened. A middle aged man came out and walked to the door to the bathroom. He took off his shirt and tied it around the door. Making a makeshift lock. He walked back to me and threw me to the floor. I don't think I was emotionally capable of dealing with what was happening. So my body went into lockdown. My mind shut off. My limbs were frozen. My pants were still unzipped. And he pulled them off. He started blowing me while stripping himself. He sat me up against the stall door and forced me to suck him off. I'm not sure how long it was. But eventually he pulled out and jerked himself until he came on me. Then he stood up. Got dressed. Washed his face. And walked out. Eventually I regained control of my limbs and put my clothes back on. Practice was over at this point. So I walked to my mom's car. Hopped in. And went home pretending that nothing happened. Fast forward to two weeks later. I'm at school. I'm not sure how it came about. But I found myself behind the cafeteria. The man who raped me holding me by the throat. School was about to be let out. And he had me call my mom to tell her I was sleeping over at my friend's house tonight. I did just that. And my mom didn't question it. He walked me out to where his car was parked and made me get in. He drove me to his house, which was fairly large and expensive looking. He brought me inside and down into the basement. There wasn't much down there. Save for a mattress. He told me to lay on it. And he started stripping off my clothes. He grabbed these leather belts and used them to tie each of my limbs to a respective corner of the bed. For the next 18 hours he tortured and abused me. When he decided he had enough. He drove me to my home and dropped me off. I went inside and pretended nothing had happened. This ended up happening a total of 7 times in the next 4 months or so. And then I never saw him again. One day. About 7 months after I first saw him. I saw his obituary in the local paper. I did more research and found that he had killed himself. The hardest part for me to read was that he left behind a wife and two young kids. I developed PTSD and went into a horrible depression. In some sick kind of way though. This helped me to become myself. I knew that I was transgender since 5th grade. But I had never told anyone. When I was 15. The depression was worse than it had ever been. I figured nothing could get worse than it was. So I decided to come out to my parents. They were infuriated and called me a mistake. They said they hated me. Three days later I attempted suicide. I woke up in the IQ a few days after that. I was sent to an inpatient mental health hospital. I was there for three months before being transferred to another residential treatment center. These were undoubtedly the hardest months of my life. But I learned more there than I have anywhere else. Throughout this process. My parents came to understand and respect my identity. When I came home. I came out publicly and started living full time as a girl. I've still never told anyone about what happened in 7th grade. Because I'm terrified that my parents would send me back to inpatient treatment. I still have PTSD fairly severely. But I've been able to apply a lot of the healthy coping mechanisms I learned in treatment to be able to cope with this as well. Now I'm 18 and about to graduate high school. I think I'm relatively healthy mentally. I relapse with self-harm occasionally. But I'm always able to bring myself out of it and cope healthily. TL. DR. I was repeatedly kidnapped and raped when I was 12. When I was about 6 or 7. I was playing with my cousin who was in his late teens in my dad's office on a Sunday. A little pretext here is that my dad's office is in our house and this happened when both of my parents were home as well as my grandmother. I don't remember what we were playing. But I very vividly remember him asking me to lie down on a table. Pulling my pants down. Asking me to hold still and then proceeded to blow me. 
I had no idea what was happening as I thought it was also part of the play. This is not the worst thing though. That very day. I told my parents about this. Because I figured that something was wrong. I never got the good touch. Bad touch talk from my parents. I shyly told them and somehow could still remember my dad's shocked face. However. They simply told me to not tell this to anyone and never talk to him again. I never understood the seriousness of it. When the same cousin came over the next week. My parents didn't object to me playing with him again. But he didn't repeat any of that, as far as I could remember. My parents kept in touch with him years after that and they still talk whenever he comes home. My parents even gifted him expensive gold jewelry for his marriage. No one in this world knows about this. Except my parents. My blood boils whenever I think about this. It affected in subtle, but significant ways. The very fact that my parents decided to avoid family drama. Even if it would mentally scar me makes me super angry. I developed deep psychological and trust issues. And been battling severe depression and porn addiction. Which my parents still do not know about. Sometimes I wish my parents are dead. I hate them. When I was 14 stroke 15. I was depressed tough and got to talking to an older guy, late 20s, on the internet. Eventually. It turned into more and went on for a year or so until I couldn't handle it anymore and made up a reason for breaking it off. Because I was too cowardly to straight up tell him I couldn't do this anymore and it felt really wrong. Cue a year of harassment when he would bombard me with messages saying he just wanted to talk to me because we were great friends. That he wanted to love me. And that I was a great person. It just stopped one day. I'm still terrified that he could. If he wants. Track me down. I told him a lot of personal stuff I haven't told anyone else. I was really fucking struggling at that age. That's why I started talking to him because it seemed like he was the only person that cared. And I'm scared that it'll come to light one day and my family and friends will know what I did. I don't know how I'm going to drop this bombshell on any serious relationships I have. And I know it wouldn't be fair to keep it hidden either. So it's going to have to come out sometime. 1. I used to be a heroin addict. And abused all sorts of drugs. Got drug induced psychosis from taking too much Adderall and ruined thousands of dollars worth of research materials. If any of my current professors or research supervisors knew. Or if any of the admissions committees for future medical schools find out. It will ruin my life goal of becoming a doctor. I've been clean for about 9 months now. 2. I'm possibly kleptomanic. Or just selfish. I used to steal all the time to finance my drug habit. But I kept doing it even after I got clean just because I wanted to save money and I got a rush when stealing. I've stolen about $1,000 worth of food in the last 8 months and I got caught at the local grocery store. Which was really embarrassing and shameful. I still do it a little. But not nearly as much as I used to. They let me go after paying for it all which was nice of them. 3. I jack off to incest porn. Which my girlfriend would absolutely loathe to find out as she is somewhat sexually repressed. Definitely will get buried. Never told anybody this. Fuck. My brother molested me several times as a kid. I went along with it because I was young. Told that every brother and sister does this. Happened between ages 8 and 11. After it stopped I kept it in denial for years. For the last few years. It went back into my head and I accepted that it happened. What caused this is the hatred I have of my brother. But that has to do with unrelated things. I've wondered at times. What would happen if I told somebody? I think I know what could happen. Either everybody calls me a liar or my dad, who has serious anger problems, murders my brother. What's most likely to happen is me keeping this secret until the day I die. There was once a time when I wanted to tell somebody. My boyfriend. However. I already have some mental issues that he helps me with. He deals with enough already. Plus his own mother went through this as a child and has some serious issues herself. I don't want him thinking that when I'm older I'll be like her too. 
My boyfriend and I have been together for 4 years. It is by far the best, happiest, and healthiest relationship I've ever been in. Seriously. It's amazing. The thing that no one else knows is that it's also a BDSM relationship. He is my sir. And I'm his pet. There are times we're together and it's like that aspect is far in the background. Of the times? I obey, I do what I'm told, as far as from grabbing him something to drink. Or giving him a blowjob. There are also many toys. Whips. Riding crops. Etc. No one knows. They'd think I was fucking insane if this ever got out. They'd think he was abusing me and should most likely be brought up on assault and battery charges. When both people are consenting adults. With massive amounts of love and respect for the other person. A BDSM relationship is a beautiful thing. Not going to bother making a thrill away. There are probably too many things. But I am a male escort. Got into it to try and ward off depression I think a few years ago. Been doing it on and off since then. I'm 19. I really dislike sex. Anal is uncomfortable but I take it like a man. I guess. My sexuality is somewhere on the asexual homoromantic spectrum. I like platonic things though if it wasn't the possibility of homelessness and needing money I would just rather be a hermit. Took me a while to get over the morality barrier of sex. Went on hiatus and began doing it again. Most of my clients are 40 plus 50 plus year old guys. I smile and fake liking their touch. I dislike their shifting fat as I massage them. Sometimes I just want to. I DK. Stab them? It sounds so angsty but it's not like it is not my choice. So it's business and they get what they want. And I get paid. And I just wait it out. It's not nice that it doesn't pay much in my city. Then I get home. With my mom thinking I was staying by a friend. I take a shower if I didn't shower at the clients. My mind automatically blocks out what happened. Somewhere during the day I recall and cringe. But it's like a hazy memory. From one encounter I got a candida infection. Determined what it is myself and I'm treating it myself. It's invasive so it's in my body. Making me feel like draining my sick blood out but I have read a lot on it and I'm aware of microbial gut flora balance. And pretty much everything else about the fungus. Etc. I am not in my sad depressive phase anymore. I'm in the post depression apathy. Mum says I should just go out for a run to cure it. She has no idea about a lot of things but I'll just carry on being the straight. Morally upstanding son she imagines me as for now since she wouldn't bear otherwise. I don't mind being alone anymore. I found I can't feel as if I fit in with the LGBTQ plus folk either and it's okay I guess. I still like my cat. Fuck it. I'm not dealing with a throwaway since no one will see it. I'm a terrible programmer. I got my computer science degree through pure luck and lots of sleepless nights. I guess I just can't think of the right steps to take to solve a problem because my hardest problem is that I just can't visualize what's necessary to be done. No matter how much I try and practice programming I just feel like crying because even writing simple programs takes me much longer than expected. I just got accepted to a programming position that I will start in a few days and I'm terrified that I'm going to absolutely fail. I've been studying harder than ever to prep myself but I'm worried I'll get there and they'll realize they made a mistake in hiring me. Throw away, like most in this thread. It's just the one person. But if my daughter's father ever found out about her I'd be screwed. I was in a really bad place when I met him, suspended from a good college. Left a good job to move to a city for a guy who dumped me right before I moved. No money. He was very pushy and emotionally abusive. Which I didn't think was actually a thing until I met him. Alcoholic and spent every penny we had on booze and cigarettes knowing my dad would send money so I could eat. Pushed me around a few times when he was drunk. But nothing serious. I even gave up buying birth control so we could afford groceries. That usually wouldn't have been an issue. Since he just peck kissed me before he left for work. When he got home and before rolling over to sleep. However. I decided to try and keep us together. We were engaged, using my charms. 
I was late on my period and even took a test. It came back positive. But I tried convincing myself it was fake because it was a cheap test. I even showed it to him and he told me there was no way it was his, basically accusing me of cheating. I finally got the backbone to leave. Stashed away a couple of bucks for gas to make it to my parents place. My daughter is perfect. And I feel confident in my decision not to tell him about her. He had already given up his parental rights on his firstborn son so he wouldn't have to keep paying child support. I don't think he would have stayed sober long enough to take care of her. And there's no telling the type of people he would have let around her. I don't think he would have let me leave if he thought for sure I was pregnant. Because I would have been a permanent meal ticket for him. I'm constantly terrified he will find out and petition for visitation just out of spite. He married some druggy chick with a gaggle of kids and seems to be content. Anyway. I'm leaving out a lot of details. I just word vomited on this post. But it feels good to just let it out. My mother would rather I lie to my daughter. But I have no idea what I'm going to tell her when she gets older. I'm very thankful for her. She made me grow up and grow into the person I was always supposed to be before I took a detour. Sorry for the wall of text. I'm on my phone and have never really posted ever. I'm a financial dominatrix. I call it that but really I just take advantage of vulnerable men for a price. All consensual. My dad's side of the family doesn't know. For years now I've managed to convince them that I buy and sell. I don't have the first clue about buying and selling and I have no idea how I've carried the lie on but it makes my stomach drop every time my dad asks what I'm selling lately and how much I'm making. Luckily most of my contact with him is by phone so he can't see me turning bright red and looking around my room for inspiration for my bullshitting. My dad's side of the family are very upper class and judgmental. I've always been compared to my very academically gifted sister. Who now works for the government and is well liked by everyone. I've always been in her shadow, I do admire her though. And have never lived up to any of her accomplishments. For once I feel as though my dad is actually proud of me because he can see I'm succeeding. I just bought my first home and I have a lot of nice things. But if he were to find out my secret, it really hurts me to know he'd probably disown me. That I've fallen in love with my friend. Who I'm going to be moving in with in August. The reason why I say this secret could ruin my life is because if I don't move out of my home. I know I'll become either more depressed. And face more family issues I don't want to deal with. If I told my mum the reason why I want to leave, because of her, it will kill her. The guy I'm in love with is a traditional Christian guy. Waiting until marriage type. We dated in February. And we got super close and we both felt like there was a connection and just this nice closeness of understanding that I've never had with a guy before. But he ended it without because he got scared freaked out about liking me. He's one of those guys. He's also the one who asked me to move in with him. So when he asked me to. It all made sense. I'm moving out because I want to get away from a somewhat dysfunctional home life. I've been wanting to move out of Finnish university since January. And I'm pretty sure that something is going to happen between us when we move in together. We actually saw each other last week and we hung out for a bit. And I get a feeling that he still likes me. And that what happened between us isn't over. If I told him that I loved him. He'd freak out. So I won't. I'll just see what happens once we're living together. Late to this thread. But I regret having my kid and I don't want another. I have a daughter and another on the way. My wife is ecstatic about it and I'm mortified. We talked a few times when my wife found out she was pregnant 3 months ago, birth control fail, and I let her know I thought it was a bad idea. Why? I'm 52. My wife is 41. I simply don't want to have another kid. Our first is almost 3 and loud 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 all the time. A constant struggle of wills and emotion. Having another feels like it might legit kill me. I love my daughter. She is funny and goofy and loves her parents. However. She is a huge amount of work due to emerging personality issues that we have been working on with a pediatric therapist. If given the option. I'd go back in time and choose to not have kids at all. 
but I can't tell my wife. It would destroy her completely. When we found out about the latest pregnancy, I had said we should consider an abortion. She was very upset and we fought for weeks. We saw a counselor and after some sessions, I came around to accepting and even encouraging this child. But I just wish my wife would see that this is too much for us. I think this child is a mistake for us right now. I'll love the kid regardless. They don't choose to be in this world, they are born innocent and I'll love them as I do my first. I just wish I could go back. I really don't like talking about this but here it goes. When I was in 4th grade, I had a Facebook account. A guy with an anime profile picture added me and I thought he was a classmate. I was wrong. It was a 40 year old guy who added me. He said he wanted me to come over and downloaded this thing where he can track my computer with a specific pin that I had to give to him. I was a dumbass kid and gave him all my personal details beside my address. He asked me if I knew what rape and would do it to me if he ever met me in real life. I blocked him immediately not because of the inappropriate messages. But because he was being annoying to me. He found my YouTube channel and started messaging me there. Calling me cute. I messaged him to screw off or I'll call the police. This will always worry me because one day he may just come back. I still know his YouTube channel. Throw away. For obvious reasons. My freshman year of college I was living in the dorms and my first roommate had moved out so I was living alone for a while. I reconnected with someone I went to high school, we were just acquaintances then, and he was an upperclassman. We made plans to study together one day. All was well and we became friends. One night I get a call from him and he's like hey. I have a couple six packs and I'm right by your dorm. Wanna hang out and have a few? So I say yes. And he says he'll be over in a bit. He calls me when he's downstairs. So I go down to meet him and he's obviously drunk. He's loudly chatting with some people but eventually manages to follow me up the stairs. Uncoordinated but decently well. We get to my room and he whips out the Smirnhoffs and Miller High Life's from underneath a jacket. Why he thought I liked Smirnoff is beyond me. But that's besides the point. Comma after two drinks or so and quite a lot of bullshitting. He's leaning over me as I sit at my desk. Grabs my chin. And forces his mouth onto mine. I'm feeling pretty good at this point, low freshman alcohol tolerance. Bite me, so I go along with it. He's rough. And for some crazy reason. Thought that running his tongue along my upper gums and teeth would be sexy. Because his ex-girlfriend used to love it. I get grossed out and push him off and I'm not sure what happened after that. After another while. He started rummaging through my plastic organizers and finds a strip of condoms. Funny enough. They weren't mine. But left over from a prank on my original roommate before she moved out. As soon as he finds the condoms. He starts telling me how great sex with him would be. I'm not interested because at that point in time I was still a virgin. He proceeds to overpower me and bend me over a spare chair in the room. Where he unbuttons my shorts and sticks his hands down them. I manage to wiggle away and sit back down and he walks to the other side of the room to put the condoms back in the organizer. He starts telling me how big his dick is and I start ignoring him. Fiddling with my phone. I look up and he's got his dick out. Exposing himself to me. I look away and he starts telling me okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Look. I put it away. So I'll look up and he still has it out. I endured this for a little while longer and then started making excuses about how I had things to do early in the morning so I need him to leave. He finally does and I go to bed. For a year after that. He would constantly text me to hang out or half ass apologize and it got to the point where I had to download an app to block his number. For some reason my phone didn't have the option. He just messaged me the other day through Facebook. Saying that he's in the army now and he hopes we can continue on our friendship. I left him on read. Every time I see his face. I want to get sick. I've never told anyone and I don't really wish to. I don't want to play the victim. I just want other people to be able to recognize the red flags before things turn worse. I've struggled with calling this sexual assault and beating myself up for putting myself in the position for it to happen. 
Though I know I shouldn't. I'm a mid-30s mom of two young children. I live a fairly boring suburban mom life. Got married straight out of high school. Had kids later on. Been married many years. Few years back husband wanted to start swinging. We tried it. It was kinda hot but he never would sleep with other women. Years go by. Explains he has a hot wife fetishes. He wants me to go off and sleep with other men. Come back and regale the event to him. We give it a try. His hot wife fetish turns to cuckold fetish. This is his crossing a line for me but I give it a shot anyways. I met the great guy and see him regularly. Husband knows and is groovy with it. Me and other guy start to fall in love. Husband and I decide to move boyfriend in with us. An Abiapa family. JPEG. Now we have been living as a polyamorous triad for half a year in our tiny conservative southern town in the Bible Belt. If our family's jobs friends found out we would be shunned and have to move to a big city. I would be fired from my job immediately. I wish we could just be honest about our love for each other. I can't ever marry my boyfriend because it's illegal. I have hidden that I am a war orphan from literally every single person in my life. Mother and sister died in the Chechen war. And my aunts and uncles think I left the city and stayed with a friend for two years in Astrakhan but in reality I stayed in Grozny and experienced the entire war. But it's even worse than that. None of my friends. My roommates. My girlfriends. None of them know that I am an orphan. Let alone a war orphan. They don't know that I used to be hooked on heroin during the war and kicked the habit when I was 17. I have basically been living a lie about my history and my past for my entire life. Every single person who has ever asked about my history has heard a lie. And the lies sometimes interconnect with one another and mix and match. And I am worried one day someone in my friend group is going to connect the dots and realize I am lying. It wouldn't ruin my life. But it would ruin the perception of my life. And the trust I have with the people around me. I pay women to pretend to be nice to me. I got married when I was 20. My wife and I are very conservative Christians. We have been married for 12 years and have two kids. During our honeymoon she wasn't very interested in sex. And that was a red flag for me. But I thought it was too late. Once I had my first kid I realized I was stuck. My wife and I get along okay. But it is more like having a roommate than a spouse. I have tried everything. I bring her presents. Send her texts. I try to surprise her with dates or gifts I make. She is not an affectionate person at all. I have tried to bring this up multiple times. But I cannot get it through to her. We have sex weekly. But it is always very similar. I work on her for 20 to 40 minutes. Before basically jacking myself off on her. Every time I talk to her about it she acts like she doesn't understand. When I tell her I need some personal attention or some enthusiasm she does it in a very half-hearted and forced way. After 12 years I have basically given up. We never fight and I try to do nice things for her. But we are basically together for the kids. She has no idea. One day I saw a YouTube video where a dude was making fun of ASMR. I googled it and thought it was pretty silly until I found the girlfriend roleplay videos. They are amazing. The idea that some people have this relationship makes me so happy. I have explicitly asked my wife to act this way. And she does it in such a forced, rote way that it actually hurts more than it helps. I have watched every girlfriend roleplay video I can find multiple times. One day, I noticed that some of these girls have a Patreon for personal videos. I have been paying several girls to act like my girlfriend for a few minutes. I am pretty successful. And can afford to do it without affecting my children's future. My kids are the most important thing in the world to me. I don't want the girls to be naked or to do anything sexual in the videos. I wish there was another option. But I wouldn't leave my wife because I am afraid of losing my kids. So I pay girls to be nice to me. They get some money out of it. And I feel loved that night. If my wife found out. She would divorce me for cheating. My family. 
some of whom know my main so I'm using a throwaway. Are of a very socially conservative bent. We were all raised in a fundamentalist environment. And are expected to follow those values. I've gotten very good at playing the innocent ingenue. The good little church girl who is a pillar of the community. Partly because I can honestly look my family in the eye and say that I've never had alcohol. Never smoked. Or done any drugs. I knew I was a lesbian in high school. But I stayed very closeted out of fear. Mostly. I already knew I wasn't comfortable with the faith I had been raised with. And accepting my sexuality was the beginning of the break. I went to college out of state at a more liberal school. Over the course of college I would say I probably slept with around 30 women. Most of them were one night stands. Though I did have a group of 6 girls who shared me consistently for my first 2 years. I should have posted this in yesterday's thread about the sluttiest thing people have ever done. I should also note that these were some of the happiest days of my life and I was 100% on board with the arrangement. Close bracket. I have never been in a long term relationship. I cannot imagine introducing a girlfriend to my family. Whenever I go home. Everyone still thinks that I'm saving myself for marriage and all that. I've invented a few good Christian boys who treated me right but never seemed to work out. If they found out what I did. What I am. It would be bad not just for me. But for the whole family. Just having a gay daughter would make my parents pariahs in the eyes of some of my other relatives. I'm pretty sure my grandfather would never talk to them again unless they disowned me. Which I know they wouldn't want to do. TL. DR. I'm a lesbian whore who would break apart to family if I came out. Me 26 slash M. Five years ago I was engaged. Things seemed great. Didn't fight often. And when we did we always were able to talk openly about all of the issues and compromise with each other. She was my best friend and after growing up abused. Neglected. Poor. And scared. It was nice to be able to finally trust someone. So when I came home to find her gone it broke me. Left a letter saying she was leaving to be with a girl that she had been talking to and fallen for and that she was sorry. Changed her number. Email and disappeared from my life. My life from there spiraled out of control. Doing trafficking drugs. Drinking. Sex. I slept with over 30 women over the course of a year. One of the girls I drunkenly slept with turned out to be 15. I saw tattoos and her drinking smoking so I assumed she was at least 18. When I found out I was disgusted with myself and went further into my depression. A few days after I found out my ex finally called me and we talked about things. She asked me if I had slept with anyone. So I told her the truth. Minus the 15 year old detail. She told me that the only way I could have slept with so many women was if I had been wanting to all along. That she was disgusted with me and that it was a mistake to call. We got off the phone. I took a fist full of Vicodin. Washed it down with vodka. Put a belt around my neck tied to the inside of my closet. Sat down and waited to pass out. I woke up the next day on my closet floor. When I fell out of the chair the belt broke. If word got out about the drugs, sex or the attempted suicide, my parents would make it about them and fall off the wagon yet again. One of them would try to get me arrested and I'd lose my friends. I told one friend part of my past and now we hardly talk because he started treating looking at me differently. So I keep it buried in my history. My former stepfather was a registered sex offender and my mother knew and was still with him and they got married. Before the marriage he was alright but after he started touching my sister, she's 2 years older than me and this happened from the time I was 9-12. Well anyways I found out what was happening but couldn't tell my mom. One day I basically told him to take me instead and I wouldn't fight back. I saw how happy my sister became and couldn't bear to tell her why he stopped. One day she finally told on him at school and he got arrested. I told one person, my older cousin. After he went to trail it looked like he was gonna get off free so my cousin did some dumb shit to go to jail and basically raped my former stepdad to death on the night before the last day of the trail. My cousin is serving a life sentence and I could never repay him for what he did for me. I minorly ruined my life for a year or so but my cousin fucked his whole life up for us and I can't thank him enough. 
My whole family have shunned him because they don't know the whole story. That I constantly contemplate suicide. Almost daily. I don't think I could do it. I was caught the only time I tried it which was on my 18th birthday. I'm bipolar depressive and haven't been on meds or talked to a licensed therapist in 5-7 years. College dropout, you know the type. Ace every test never did homework in high school so I never tried in college, addicted to video games and pot. The latter starting about 3 years ago. I have a plethora of people to talk to but I can't take the first step. I would rather bottle up my emotions and suppress them with drugs than talk to someone. I can't hold a steady job. I either fuck up on the clock, call in enough, due to a depression episode, to get fired, or quit for various reasons. I have no ambitions in life. Nothing motivates me to wake up. I get little enjoyment out of talking to people. And the few I do enjoy I somehow burn a bridge with them. Modest Mouse is opening line to third planet, everything that keeps me together is falling apart. I got this thing that I consider my only art of fucking people over, accurately describes things. Every day mentally is a struggle that I hope just ends. I want to be happy but I fear it will just have a sad ending. In my junior year of high school, I began taking AP sculpture. As you can probably imagine no one took the class seriously and saw it as a senior blow off class. As such I was one of the only juniors in the class and instantly a target for their cruelty. Starting with name calling and gentle ribbing it turned much more personal. It never got violent. But they would bump me while working on the wheel. Essentially ruining anything with I worked with. Then it escalated further to poking holes in the clay I purchased, $25. A lot for my 16 year old self. Leaving it dry and unusable. After an entire semester of hell. I decided to fight back. Now. Being an art class there was a sizable amount of independent work and the teacher generally left us students to our own devices. As long as the requirement of 6 projects a quarter have been met the teacher never hassled you. You turned your projects in on the drying shelves with a handwritten proposal. And then the clay would be fired in the kiln. I watched my tormentors turn in their projects. And destroy them surreptitiously. Over the course of the second semester. I proudly claim to have destroyed 80% of the projects turned in. With 2 weeks left in the school year. The teacher approaches these 6-7 seniors and holds one-on-one -on -one conferences with them. The seniors failed the class. They did not walk out graduation and had to attend the local